database normalization. Database normalization is the process of organizing the fields and tables of a relational database to minimize redundancy and dependency. Normalization usually involves dividing large tables into smaller tables and defining relationships between them. The objective is to isolate data so that additions, deletions, and modifications of a field can be made in just one table and then propagated through the rest of the database using the defined relationships. Edgar F. Codd, the inventor of the relational model, introduced the concept of normalization and what we now know as the first normal form, one Nana Farad, in 1970. Codd went on to define the second normal form, two Nana Farads, and third normal form, three Nana Farads, in 1971 and Codd and Raymond F. Boyce define the Boyce-Codd normal form, BCNF, in 1974. Informally, a relational database table is often described as normalized if it is in the third normal form. Most three Nana Farad's tables are free of insertion, update, and deletion anomalies. A standard piece of database design guidance is that the designer should first create a fully normalized design. Then selective denormalization can be performed for performance reasons. Objectives A basic objective of the first normal form defined by Edgar Frank Ted Codd in 1970 was to permit data to be queried and manipulated using a universal data sublanguage grounded in first-order logic. SQL is an example of such a data sublanguage, albeit one that Codd regarded as seriously flawed. The objectives of normalization beyond one Nana Farad, first normal form, were stated as follows by Cod. The sections below give details of each of these objectives. Free the database of modification anomalies. When an attempt is made to modify, update, insert into, or delete from, a table, undesired side effects may follow. Not all tables can suffer from these side effects. Rather, the side effects can only arise in tables that have not been sufficiently normalized. An insufficiently normalized table might have one or more of the following characteristics. The same information can be expressed on multiple rows. Therefore updates to the table may result in logical inconsistencies. For example, each record in an employee skills table might contain an employee ID, employee address, and skill. Thus a change of address for a particular employee will potentially need to be applied to multiple records, one for each skill. If the update is not carried through successfully, if, that is, the employee's address is updated on some records but not others, then the table is left in an inconsistent state. Specifically, the table provides conflicting answers to the question of what this particular employee's address is. This phenomenon is known as an update anomaly. There are circumstances in which certain facts cannot be recorded at all. For example, each record in a faculty and their courses table might contain a faculty ID, faculty name, faculty hire date, and course code. Thus we can record the details of any faculty member who teaches at least one course, but we cannot record the details of a newly hired faculty member who has not yet been assigned to teach any courses except by setting the course code to null. This phenomenon is known as an insertion anomaly. Under certain circumstances, deletion of data representing certain facts necessitates deletion of data representing completely different facts. The faculty and their courses table described in the previous example suffers from this type of anomaly, for if a faculty member temporarily ceases to be assigned to any courses, we must delete the last of the records on which that faculty member appears, effectively also deleting the faculty member. This phenomenon is known as a deletion anomaly. Minimize redesign when extending the database structure. When a fully normalized database structure is extended to allow it to accommodate new types of data, the pre-existing aspects of the database structure can remain largely or entirely unchanged. As a result, applications interacting with the database are minimally affected. Make the data model more informative to users. Normalized tables, and the relationship between one normalized table and another, mirror real-world concepts and their interrelationships. Avoid bias towards any particular pattern of querying. Normalized tables are suitable for general-purpose querying. 
This means any queries against these tables, including future queries whose details cannot be anticipated or supported. In contrast, tables that are not normalized lend themselves to some types of queries, but not others. For example, consider an online bookseller whose customers maintain wish lists of books they'd like to have. For the obvious, anticipated query, what books does this customer want? It's enough to store the customer's wish list in the table as, say, a homogeneous string of authors and titles. With this design, though, the database can answer only that one single query. It cannot by itself answer interesting but unanticipated queries. What is the most wished for book? Which customers are interested in WWI espionage? How does Lord Byron stack up against his contemporary poets? Answers to these questions must come from special adaptive tools completely separate from the database. One tool might be software written especially to handle such queries. This special adaptive software has just one single purpose, in effect to normalize the non-normalized field. Unforeseen queries can be answered trivially, and entirely within the database framework, with a normalized table. Example Querying and manipulating the data within a data structure which is not normalized, such as the following non one name fire representation of customers' credit card transactions, involves more complexity than is really necessary. To each customer corresponds a repeating group of transactions. The automated evaluation of any query relating to customers' transactions therefore would broadly involve two stages. Unpacking one or more customers' groups of transactions allowing the individual transactions in a group to be examined, and deriving a query result based on the results of the first stage. For example, in order to find out the monetary sum of all transactions that occurred in October 2003 for all customers, the system would have to know that it must first unpack the transactions group of each customer, then sum the amounts of all transactions thus obtain where the date of the transaction falls in October 2003. One of Cod's important insights was that this structural complexity could always be removed completely, leading to much greater power and flexibility in the way queries could be formulated, by users and applications, and evaluated, by the DDMS. The normalized equivalent of the structure above would look like this. Now each row represents an individual credit card transaction, and the DVMS can obtain the answer of interest, simply by finding all rows with a date falling in October, and summing their amounts. The data structure places all of the values on an equal footing, exposing each to the DVMS directly, so each can potentially participate directly in queries. Whereas in the previous situation some values were embedded in lower level structures that had to be handled specially. Accordingly, the normalized design lends itself to general purpose query processing, whereas the unnormalized design does not. Background to normalization, definitions. Functionally dependent on X, and not functionally dependent on any proper subset of X. Employee address has a functional dependency on employee ID, skill, but not a full functional dependency, because it is also dependent on employee ID even by the removal of skill functional dependency still holds between employee address and employee ID. Normal forms The normal forms, a brev. NF of relational database theory provide criteria for determining a table's degree of immunity against logical inconsistencies and anomalies. The higher the normal form applicable to a table, the less vulnerable it is. Each table has a highest normal form, HNF. By definition, a table always meets the requirements of its HNF and of all normal forms lower than its HNF. Also by definition, a table fails to meet the requirements of any normal form higher than its HNF. The normal forms are applicable to individual tables. To say that an entire database is in normal form N is to say that all of its tables are in normal form N. Newcomers to database design sometimes suppose that normalization proceeds in an iterative fashion, that is a 1 nanofarad design is first normalized to 2 nanofarads, then to 3 nanofarads, and so on. This is not an accurate description of how normalization typically works. A sensibly designed table is likely to be in 3 nanofarads on the first attempt. Furthermore, 
if it is 3 nanofarads, it is overwhelmingly likely to have an HNF of 5 nanofarads. Achieving the higher normal forms, above 3 nanofarads, does not usually require an extra expenditure of effort on the part of the designer, because 3 nanofarads tables usually need no modification to meet the requirements of these higher normal forms. The main normal forms are summarized below. Denormalization Databases intended for online transaction processing, OLTP, are typically more normalized than databases intended for online analytical processing, OLAP. OLTP applications are characterized by a high volume of small transactions such as updating a sales record at a supermarket checkout counter. The expectation is that each transaction will leave the database in a consistent state. By contrast, databases intended for OLAP operations are primarily read-mostly databases. OLAP applications tend to extract historical data that has accumulated over a long period of time. For such databases, redundant or denormalized data may facilitate business intelligence applications. Specifically, Dimensional tables in a star schema often contain denormalized data. The denormalized or redundant data must be carefully controlled during extract, transform, load, ETL, processing, and users should not be permitted to see the data until it is in a consistent state. The normalized alternative to the star schema is the snowflake schema. In many cases, the need for denormalization has waned as computers and our DBMS software have become more powerful. But since data volumes have generally increased along with hardware and software performance, OLAP databases often still use denormalized schemas. Denormalization is also used to improve performance on smaller computers as in computerized cache registers and mobile devices, since these may use the data for lookup only, for example price lookups. Denormalization may also be used when no RDBMS exists for a platform, such as POM or no changes are to be made to the data and the SWIFT response is crucial. Non-first normal form NF2 or N1 nanofarad Denormalization is the opposite of normalization. In recognition that denormalization can be deliberate and useful, the non-first normal form is a definition of database designs which do not conform to first normal form, by allowing sets and sets of sets to be attribute domains, SHIC 1982. The languages used to query and manipulate data in the model must be extended accordingly to support such values. One way of looking at this is to consider such structured values as being specialized types of values, domains, with their own domain-specific languages. However, what is usually meant by non-one nanofarad models is the approach in which the relational model and the languages used to query it are extended with a general mechanism for such structure. For instance, the nested relational model supports the use of relations as domain values, by adding two additional operators, nest and unnest, to the relational algebra that can create and flatten nested relations, respectively. Consider the following table. Assume a person has several favorite colors. Obviously, favorite colors consist of a set of colors modeled by the given table. To transform a 1 nanofarad into a nanofarad 2 table a nest operator is required which extends the relational algebra of the higher normal forms. Applying the nest operator to the 1 nanofarad table yields the following NF2 table. To transform this NF2 table back into a 1 nanofarad an unnest operator is required which extends the relational algebra of the higher normal forms. The unnest, in this case, would make colors into its own table. Although unnest is the mathematical inverse to nest, the operator nest is not always the mathematical inverse of unnest. Another constraint required is for the operators to be bijective, which is covered by the partition normal form, PNF.